even though I have been practicing the teachings for many years, the mind still becomes obsessive and filled with fears and anxieties. I am so tired of fighting with this mind. What should I do to overcome this mental situation? Do what I said now. Analyze your fears and anxieties. They're all based on selfishness. Your fear is due to your own selfishness. Possessiveness. You want to possess things. You are afraid of losing them. You want everybody to appreciate you, praise you. When that doesn't happen, you are afraid. You are anxious whether it would happen or not. It's all you, 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 you. Look at a baby. They don't have fear. They don't have anxiety. Why? Because they don't have selfishness. They are free in their mind. The mind has not eh, been haunted by this I, me, mine. You should go to the root cause of the problem. Just merely practicing a so-called sadhanas, eh? you can do a hatha yoga. Have you seen the leech doing headstand? The leech, headstand. Sometimes it stands on the feet, sometimes on the head. Huh? Huh? Monkeys do headstand. Hmm? So that alone will not make you a yogi. Saint Ramalingam once was teaching people. Why are you smearing all over the holy ash? Hmm? To force yourself to be a great devotee. Hmm? Even the white pumpkin smears holy ash all over. You know the pumpkin? Here we have only the red pumpkin, huh? orange pumpkin. There's a white pumpkin, Kushmandam. It's called white because all over an ash, white ash, is smeared. So he used to tease people. Even the white pumpkin is better than you. You want to take bath every three, every time, three times a day, morning, noon, evening. But what about the fish and frog? They take bath always. They must be greater yogis than you. Not that I say you should not do hatha yoga or should not take a bath. But don't stop there. That's all just physical. Behind all those things, you should have the greater aim. Why am I doing that? Am I free from my selfishness? Then there's no anxiety, there's no worry, there's no fear.
So what should I do to overcome the mental situation? Become totally selfless. Don't do anything for your sake. It's always for the sake of the others. Dedicate your life for that. That's what the saints would say, Sivarpanam, Guharpanam, Krishnarpanam. Means, I'm doing it as an offering to Shiva, offering to Krishna. Whatever you do, do it as an offering to God who is in front of you in that personality. See God in every face, everything. When you pour water to a plant, feel that you are pouring Abhishegam to God. When you develop that, no fear, no anxiety. What is the soul and how is it related to the true self? Hmm. The soul is the true self. Sometimes the term is given to the reflected self, the egoistic self. Like Atman is the, in Sanskrit, is the pure self. But same Atman, when reflected, the reflected Atman is called Jivatman, the soul. So if you want to differentiate between the Jivatman and Atman, Atman is the self, Jivatman is the soul. They are not different. One is the original, the other one is the reflector, reflection. Most gurus and masters are single. Huh? Please tell me about married, enlightened person. Are there any? You say most gurus and masters. So that means there are gurus and masters married also. Hmm? Hmm? Married or unmarried has nothing to do with enlightenment. You can be married or not married. What do you mean by marriage? In fact, most of us are married people. Everybody, I should say, except a few, probably. Only, only when you find a girl or a boy, you are married. You are married to your money, married to your country, married to your power, married to your position, married to your craziness. Hmm? We are all married. Married to the ashram. Hmm? My ashram. Hmm? Hmm? Married to the begging bowl. Hmm? That is what you call marriage. Attachment. This is mine. Whoever calls anything as mine is married. My students 
If a guru says they are my students, he is married to the students. My teaching, he is married man. Wherever you see that my, 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 You are married. Who is really and truly, really and truly not married? Who is free from any kind of attachment? Totally, totally detached. Such people are the enlightened people. So that means you don't have run away, have to run away from everything. Your family, business, this, that, your position. No. Don't be married to them. Do that as a job you are doing. That's your duty. King Janaka was a great king. Married. The father of Janaki, Janak, Sita, he had a great kingdom. But in Ramayana, one time there was a conflict. Even the Vasishta and Viswamitra, the great rishis, couldn't decide. They had to call King Janaka. You are the only true impartial person, not attached to anything. You decide it. He has to make a decision between his daughter and son-in-law and another party. He didn't lean over to this my daughter's case or somebody else's case. Why? Because totally, totally unattached. Once he was studying in an ashram with so many other disciples, the, the guru of the ashram naturally had a leaning towards Janaka, a special affection. So the other disciples got a little hmm, jealous of it. So there was a gossip. Even the gurus, he is a king. We are all ordinary poor people. Hmm? So, when everybody comes to the class or whatever they are there, he will receive everybody, but when Janaka comes, he will, his face will brighten. Then the other people, look, look at him, look at him. <laughs> hey, see? Huh? Behind the back, huh? And the Guru noticed it. One day he wanted to give them a lesson. While he was in a gathering, in a satsang, by his own siddhi, he created an image. The ashram was next the compound wall, next to the compound wall of the palace. The people from the palace came running and said, Janaka, Janaka, Maharaj, the palace is on fire. Immediately all the disciples got up while they were listening to some Upanishad, they forgot all that. They got up 
and ran except Janaka. It is Janaka's palace in fire. These people were getting up and running. Within a few minutes, they came back laughing. Oh, it all seemed to be an illusion. There was no fire. The palace is all okay. And came and sat. Then the guru asked, It's okay, but why are you running? It's not your palace. This is Janakant. Janaka is sitting here. Why are you running away? Maharaj, you see, we have a, a cloth line and all our line cloths were <laughs> drying on the cloth line. We wanted to save that because we don't have anything else to wear. Janaka, why didn't you go? Swami, what is, what happened? What is, you were talking about uh, the immortal self and I'm, I'm contemplating on that. What happened? He didn't even know that uh, the message came, they all got up and ran. Then the Guru said, that is the difference between you and those people. Even though the news comes, his own palace in fire, he's not attached to it. So to prove yourself to be good disciples, don't sit here if there is a fire outside now. Tomorrow you will say, why didn't you go and put out the fire? You said that. <laughs> huh? But there's a good smell coming from the kitchen. Your nose will go there. Hmm? That is what. Totally free from attachment. Any kind of attachment... Do your duty, that's all. 